listen to that. It's 12 o'clock. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Holy Tomb. Itamar is a great tour guide and a new YouTuber and me. But listen to the bells. Should I start now? It's war time between Israel and the Hamas terror organization from Gaza. We're here for the first time after I think almost three weeks yeah. uh, to visit the church. Together with us are a few beautiful ladies <laughs> that are uh, living in Israel as well as I believe, working here. But beside it, there are no tourists which is said for us because we cannot guide you and uh, happy for you because the church will be quiet and uh, beautiful. I'm donating that tour to a beautiful couple that are together more than three, 31 years, uh, Paul, which is Shahul in Hebrew, and Rachel, which is Rachel in Hebrew. And we are in front of the facade of the church that is the place that Jesus was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. Uh, for me, it's the most secret place for most of the Christians. But I must tell you, and I think you know it, uh, Itamar, which is uh, Moses' nephew. This is the name of your... Uh, yes, yeah. that's the son of Aaron. Yes, son of Aaron. Which Itamar. makes Moses my uncle. Yeah, in that case... <laughs> In that case, this is his YouTube name, uh, YouTube channel name. Then, and and for me, it's so important because it's it's empty. The last time that I took a picture, a video of that church without tourists uh, was uh, at COVID time, and I remember that I was was afraid to speak because even that priest were it in the church, uh, I was so. I, I, I was sure that I didn't do something good. Now, they are renovating the floor of the church. Then you will, you might hear a little bit of noise, but I think so, I'm not sure. Because uh, the ISIS um, from Gaza target Jerusalem as well, I think that the Christian people who came from all over the world to renovate the church left uh, uh, Israel as well. Uh, uh, and the reason uh, that I think that it's happened is because it's quiet now. I was expecting to hear a lot of uh, noise here. Then um, the facade is mostly from the end of the 11th century, the beginning of the 12th century. It's uh, from the Crusader time. Um, and you can see the ladder there. But let me tell you, uh, uh, tell, uh, tell you that the church belongs to everyone. If you are Catholic, you believe that it's a Catholic church. If you are a Greek Orthodox or Orthodox, you believe that it's a Greek Orthodox church. If it's Arme you're Armenian, you believe that it's an Armenian church. But in, in effect, I mean, in reality, it belongs to everyone. And because it belongs to everyone, we have tension between the domination themselves. Um, then then okay, the story of the ladder, um, the two um, chapels, belongs to the Armenian. And they decided to clean the windows from the outside. They took the ladder outside and started to clean it. The Greek Orthodox came to them and said, hey, hey, who told you that the outside, the facade uh, of the church belongs to you? The facade belongs to everyone. Until they figure out who belongs, uh, who owns the facade, the ladder will be there. And um, when I'm guiding tourists, I'm actually showing them pictures from 1859 or even 1879 of uh, the ladder, it's still there. Then let's enter the church. And uh, are we going to do that according to the story, according to, to the, the Bible? the chronological order? Yeah, let's climb up to the Golgotha. The Golgotha itself, the Calvary belongs to, um, wait a minute, let's, let's, let's stay here for a minute, to, to Catholic and Greek Orthodox. But I want you to see something important. First of all, there's a, a lot of graffiti here, some of them from ancient time, but this is the logo of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre with the Golgotha Hill. 
you can see it here as well but i'm not sure can you hold the cross the jerusalem cross look upstairs you can see um a graffiti from 1389 uh made by um one of the Italian guys, then it shows you that graffiti can be, in a way, pollution. But graffiti from 1389, it's history. And this is sad because uh, for me to have a graffiti here, and uh, I can show you graffiti from, let's say, a week to uh, two months ago. Uh, inside that only side, it's, I think it's horrible. It's horrible. It is. Then uh, let's enter the church. The doors of the church belong to two Muslims families. One of the reasons that the Muslims controlling that, uh, that uh, they have the keys of the church is because no Christians, uh, uh, I mean the Christians, the uh, Christian denomination, they don't trust each other. Then they prefer to, to leave the key in the hands of the Muslims, but I must tell you that until uh, 1831, the keys of the uh, church was at the hands of the Muslims because they decided who will enter the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and how much they will pay for it. Uh, then now it's open to everyone, of course. And let's climb up to the Golgotha, to the Calvary, to bless the cross. If you want that cross for yourself, it's not a problem, you can always, um, Look at the um, description of the video and you will see the link of buy me a coffee and there you will understand that I can buy you the, um, the cross and I can um, oh, oh, I can prepare a video for you, bless the cross in some, uh, so many places in Jerusalem and then one of the places in Jerusalem and then um, I will send it to you home. I must tell you another thing. It's so empty. Look how empty it is. Even when we're getting over here with the groups, the line starts from here to yes. the top of the Golgotha. Yes, yes, and there is no even the barrier between here to the. Wow. Then we are in the Catholic place. Uh, the Catholic place is uh, is full with history, but most of the thing that you see here in the Golgotha, in the Calvary, is new. Because their church was burned down in 1808, this time not by the enemy of the Muslims, it was burned down by the Christian itself. Then, uh, a mistake, you know, candle. Uh, then, the, everything that you see here is new, and the story is from Adam and Eve until Jesus' time, which is right there, uh, except of uh, that uh, part of the mosaic wall. This is a cr crusader uh, mosaic from the crusader of the resurrection, not even about uh, something that belongs to the church. Maybe the, that mosaic wanted to understand that this is the only the beginning of the Holy, of the Holy Week, but the resurrection is the end of, of uh, the misery. Uh, without the resurrection, without the ascension, not the resurrection, this is the ascension. The resurrection was here. The ascension is the end of the story. And now we are waiting for the second coming of Christ. But this is the 10th station of the cross. That is where they strip Jesus from his clothes. And um, it used to be one of the entrances. I didn't know, I don't, I don't know if you know it. If you'll take that out, you will see a door. No, don't do that, but you can, I mean. Uh, that's a locker of the door. No, now it's a, but look at that. Ah, yes, yes. Why it's closed? It used to be, one, it, it used to be a direct entrance to the Golgotha, but the Muslims closed all the doors of the church and left only one entrance, and that's the entrance that we enter through. And until today, no one can enter through here, through there. Um, what we can see else, that's where they nailed Jesus to the cross. Uh, you can see Mary Magdalene anointing the body of Jesus and the mother. The rest are here. Look at the women of Jerusalem. Itamar, where, where are the men?
ran away. The only one who left here is uh, John, the disciple. We're going to see him soon. But you can see that the women are outside the city. See the walls of the city. Because Jesus was a Jew. And he was buried. And he was crucified by the Romans. But he was buried like a, um, uh, as a Jew. To crucify the people, they used to do that outside the gates. Why after the gate? Because this is the story. This is the media. This is the CNN of ancient time. Uh, if you want to spread the rumor, then you have to do that in a very crowded place. And the gate is always a crowded place. And on top of it, you can uh, you have to write the sin of the um, of the poor man. And, and Jesus' sin was Jesus from Nazareth, king of the Jews. That was written in three languages. Because the, the Romans already crowned someone else as a, as a king, and that was the family of, of Herod. And in that case, if someone said, I'm the king of the Jew, then he is against the Roman regime. And the only way to die is to be crucified. Because if he was stoned, just a small rubber, uh, one saw in your body, and that's it. But to be crucified is to show the word, to show the people what not to do. And that's where they nailed Jesus into the cross. And I'm blessing it for you. Mm. The altar is from the Medici family from Italy. They wanted to do that, to put it on top of the um, anointing table at the entrance of the church. We're going to visit it soon. But uh, of course, um, the, the other donation didn't agree for that. And it's right here and it's beautiful. But for me, again, you know that I'm, I'm love, I love the mother. I love Mary, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother. Uh, here you can see the Pietà. Mary is holding the dead body of her son, but soon you will see that there is a spear in her heart. When they had been in the temple, when Jesus was born, uh, Saint Simon told Mary that a son will die in front of her eyes. It's like a spear will enter to your heart, he said. Now, why the family visited the temple before they flee to Egypt? Because Jesus was the firstborn son, and the firstborn son in Judaism until today is special, and you have to donate something. Today it's like cheap food and wine in one of the synagogues, but at the ancient time was usually sacrificed at the temple. And because they were a poor family, they had to donate only two doves, two birds to, for sacrificed. Then let's look at the eyes of Mary and the spear in her heart, and then we will deal with the Greek Orthodox part of the church, the crucifixion, and I'm asking you, to, I mean, it's your video too. You can add whatever you want. You know, I can speak 24 hours. <laughs> and if you do have something to say, in, feel free to, it's like a discussion. It's also like we have our phrase in, uh, in Hebrew, and uh, it's about someone that is buried in his own. Right. Very his own uh, children. And um, to see this um, spiveto, to see this uh, spear in her heart, to get into, it, it reminds us pretty much what's going on right now in Israel. Wow, I didn't think and about to it. make the connection of, you know, that we are right now, we have families that bury their babies and True. they lost their um, brothers and sisters and <gasps> grandparents and you know just like in the spirit of the time it is something that is yeah. difficult to see like this church, church yeah church. we, we, we uh, do even a way this is the church of the holy sepulcher but at that day that isis from gaza killed 1300 innocent people for now it is 1300. It's, uh, it, that israel is now our church of the holy sepulchers of uh, innocent people who died and that's true then if it's okay by you please support Israel and pray for those innocent people who died, butcher, children were kidnapped, uh, sick, 
No, no, it's not for that video, but we are suffering now in a way then yes, I can uh, relate it. Usually there is a barrier here, but because there's no one here, then the barrier is not here too. Do you want to explain something about that? Uh, yes. But, uh, come to you, come to you. <clears throat> uh, the reason I'm saying it is the priest yeah. doesn't like me to talk. Yeah. So right now, as well, on top of the Golgotha, um, as Zahi mentioned, there is a line that starts over there from yeah. where you get to the top of the... I'm sure hill. that some of you already been there, here. And then the line goes all the way to this niche over here. There is um, this uh, circle in a hole where you can reach with your hand and touch the top of the Golgotha and where we believe that the cross stood and where Jesus was crucified. Later on, we'll be able also to see the, the chapel underneath us and where the blood of Jesus went to and to understand the yes. whole story. But uh, over here, we can see Jesus on the cross with a crown over his head, uh, with the inscription, as uh, Zachi mentioned, of the Ayan Arai, Ayan Bi, and also all for you in Hebrew, Yud Nun Mem Yud, which means Yeshua Natseret. And it's good because being. Paul, Paul and Rachel, they, I mean, at least Paul study he Hebrew. I mean, it's nice that you're mentioning something in Hebrew. Jesus um, Nazaratus Rex Judea or Basileus Judea, which means Jesus from Nazareth, the King of the Jews. In Hebrew? Yeshua Nazaret Melech HaYehudim. Yeah. And uh, I love when you're using the word Yeshua, because a lot of the Israelites are using the word Yeshu instead of Yeshua, and Yeshua is salvation. And in Hebrew, Yeshua. Then, He's going to be the Savior. Oh, you can hear now the Muazin. Um, I will stop the video now because he is stronger than us. And uh, let's sit and pray for you. I mean, uh, let's see if we can hear it again. Suddenly, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is surrounded with uh, masks. And then I will stop the video for like um, five minutes until they will end. And let's sit there. Then you will, we will be back in three to, all right, it looks like the Muazin just ended his story. Uh, red light, the microphone, so, no, should you, should, yes. yes, yes, there is okay, yes, yes. Then, what did you see from here? Beneath the, um, the glass windows is the upper part of the Golgotha, and there are three figures here. John, the disciple, the only man that left here, the rest disappeared. Jesus is on the cross, and Mary Magdalene is there. Now it's 12 o'clock, everybody knows it. Uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. Uh, without that, she, she could die. Then let's now, if it's okay by you, I'm going to bless the cross uh, at this exact spot of the crucifixion. I will put my hand in the hole to touch the bedrock of the Kolkata, and then to bless your cross. You can understand that your cross is different than just a wooden cr cross made of olive. Mm. It's gone. <laughs> then that was the uh, part of the visit, tour of the church. As you, as I told you, I might cut the video into a few pieces. Then that will be the. Um, Golgotha part and the next story will be about is uh, uh, birth uh, no birth uh, is, is burial but as a Jew there's a, a nice tradition and let me tell you exactly how my mother which was a Jewish Palestinian woman was buried why I'm saying Palestinian? Because Palestine wasn't a state. It was another name of Israel from second century. Adrian, 
and destroy Israel and change the enemy to Palestine. But it was Israel. Then my birth, my mother's birth certificate was Palestine, Israel. She was born at the mandate, the British uh, time. But before we will end the story of it, uh, you mentioned the lower part of the Golgotha. Then f let's go there. Let's go there. Guide us, please. So right now we're getting into um, the chapel of the first man, the chapel of Adam. Now, this is a tradition. It's not something that we can look for in the research. Yeah, the Bible, uh, not in the research, in, in the Bible. Or in the Bible, like the, the research will like confirm what yeah, they are true, saying here. I mean. True. Um, and we are blessing the cross for you, Paul and Rachel. And we can see uh, through the window, uh, we can see a crack. Yeah. Now, by tradition, this uh, crack uh, was caused by the earthquake that took place over here after Jesus was crucified. Yeah, many um, died. And um, then the blood of Jesus went down the crack after he was uh, crucified, after he died on the cross, and went down all the way till he touched the first man's skull, the skull of Adam. Now, Adam is a symbol for us. Adam is a symbol for our sins because Adam is the first sin. Adam is Eve. the yeah. original yeah. sin. Adam and Eve. La. Adam and Eve, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, so when the blood of Jesus that we consider as the Lamb of God, as the sacrifice from what we used to uh, sacrifice to God in the temple, went down and touched the first man's skull, the skull of Adam, we were forgiven. So Jesus, Yeshua, as the Savior, um, as the one that will bring the redemption, pretty much sacrifice his life for us. True. That True. we will be forgiven for True. our sins. True. And starting from the first it's, it's one, a good one. <laughs> the original yeah. sin of uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, so we can see also the people that are uh, throwing their wishes, their trying prayers. Trying to leave some notes, yeah, just like the Western world. But let me, let me add something else. The Bible mentioned that people were resurrected because of it. Uh, but it, it, the Bible never mentioned that it was Adam. Uh, Adam is um, uh, a younger tradition, uh, and the Greek Orthodox accept it as the thing that happened. Who am I to say no for that? Then I'm blessed for you, I bless it for you too. But you can actually see the other part of the Golgotha. And if you're talking about tombs, the Crusaders weren't good soldiers or good uh, people for the Greek Orthodox and for the Jews when they. Um, 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 conquered that city. They killed not only the Muslim enemy that controlled the city, they killed a lot of Jews and a lot of Greek Orthodox. Uh, but when they came to here and they uh, built their new Jerusalem, the Crusader Jerusalem, they've been buried here too. The Greek Orthodox, when they built that area, uh, let's say destroy it in a nice way, then beneath those two branches were some of the tombs of the crusaders and beneath the beautiful wall there were more tombs of uh, crusader kings remember that they are renovated the floor that what you're looking now it might be the last video of mine with those ancient walls and uh, sadly i cannot continue to the place that uh, that saint helen found the uh, true cross but it was because um, they're renovating the floor but you can see another part of the Golgotha here can we talk about the um, mosaic wall yeah sure All right. the mosaic wall giving us a good uh, understanding of what happened over here true after Jesus uh, died on the cross so we can see Jesus like three times along the mosaic from the right to the left in the first time, we see Jesus, first of all, outside the walls. Mm -hmm. We see the three crosses. Do you remember who yeah, the yeah, crosses yeah, are yeah, for? Yeah, the two others. The two other thieves. Yeah, that one of true, them we consider as the good thief because he believed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, we can see these three crosses. And we can see the skull. The skull. The skull that connects to the chapel that we just talked about. Uh, the skull of Adam, which is a younger tradition, but um, a very strong one that we have over here right now. Um, and as we said, and it is also connected and related to other places all over Israel, cemeteries will always be outside of outside, the city. Yes. And we are outside of the city True. now, if we're going back in time. Yeah. For the last, no, think for about the last your walls. city. Think about your city now. 
Can you, I mean, do you know what's happened to your city 2,000 years ago? Most of you will look at me and say, well, there was nothing here. There was no city. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but the, it is like part of a city for the last walls that were built 500 years ago. Of course, we're outside of the walls since we left you can the see seventh that. station. You can yeah, outside the wall. And but uh, another thing, if I can add uh, uh, Itamar, the word Golgotha, the Calvary, it's a skull. And um, the only uh, place that, I mean, the only uh, uh, source that mentioned the Golgotha was the Bible. I mean, it, um, uh, we didn't find any uh, um, uh, written uh, source that actually mentioned the Golgotha. Why? Uh, why they call it the Golgotha? Maybe because it looks like a skull. If you go to the church of the uh, garden tomb, sorry, not the church, the garden tomb, it looks like a skull. Or maybe because, uh, you know, if you crucified a lot of people outside the wall, you could find a lot of skull. And they just name it, oh, the skull area. That's the crucifixion area. You know something interesting, Sahi? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it that much before. The, you see the angels above the crosses? Yes. Right here, right there, they're weeping. They're weeping. crying. The, you can see that all over. I, I didn't pay attention to that, and I've been here for so many times. But now there's no tourists. No tourists. And and it's so quiet. We can actually stand, it, we can stand here for Zoom hours in. without any problem. But we are talking about that. Joseph of Hermitia, it's with a white beard, uh, and Nactiminos, those are the two who gave Jesus their own tomb. You must understand that my mother was crucified, sorry, she wasn't crucified. Uh, she was buried at the same day because she was a very, I cannot say religious woman, but she actually believed in, in God in that way. And in that case, they had to, we had to bury her at the same day. And Jesus was crucified at 12, he died around three o'clock. And they had to bury them at the same day, and and, and day in Judaism ends at um, um, sunset. Then today, I don't know what day is today. Is it Monday? I think it's Monday. It is Monday. When we reach back to Lviv, it might be very sunset, close to, yeah. to Tuesday. It will be at six or seven p.m. And you can see the mother next to his head, and John, the disciple. John is the only disciple without the beard because we believe that he was the youngest one, the beloved one, and the women of Jerusalem. Who is Mary Magdalene? I believe is that the left man is Mary Magdalene, or the one who is now kissing his hand, uh, because usually you cannot see the hair of a lady. But in that mosaic, you can see. Um, I don't know who is Mary Magdalene, but Mary Magdalene was here. That's, let's continue to the second one. The second one is the anointing stone that we can see over here to our left hand side. Yeah, anointing stone, yeah. And that's also Shaul, where we're going to bless your Jerusalem cross, Rachel, we're going to bless your everything Jerusalem that, yeah, cross. Everything that is true. Um, because it is believed that everything that is touching this stone, uh, where Jesus was led. He will get from the holiness of Jesus and will give good luck and good health and long life. So we very much believe in that. Where Jesus had the ceremony, as a Jewish person, had the ceremony of being anointed, um, which, which is a very important ritual that we have in Judaism. True. Um, and we're doing it with an oil, uh, which is uh, very relevant for us and part of our traditions. So this is 13th station. Of the Via Dolorosa? Might be, uh, whatever, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but it, this is true. It might be the station. I accept it as a station, but not if you'll go to uh, a lot of the source, the Catholic accept it as that one. And, and that you talk one about as Mary's... Yeah, uh, yeah, the Spear in Mary. The Spear in Mary, yes. It might be both. For yeah. me, it doesn't matter. It's important here. But what we, I mean, if you look at the figures, Joseph of Arimathea, who gave Jesus his own tomb, together with Nactiminus with the green, John the disciple, Mary is right here, and the women of Jerusalem. Again, Mary Magdalene, I think is the left one because she is holding the hair. Her hair. Um, but two, in August two years ago, you can see me almost kissing my, mother, my mother's head. They purify their body just like they purify the body of Jesus. They put a shroud around her, including the face of my mother, and I had to enter 
um, to there uh, to recognize, I mean, to see that this is my mother that we are burying and not someone else. Um, someone told me that, that before I will enter, before I enter, that I will never forget that sin and is right. Now that mosaic floor is near. Um, it used to be an entrance, straight entrance to the uh, orthodox part, but they, they uh, half legally blocked it from us, but, but uh, the tombs are right there. And we are going to bless now our cross. And again, if you will buy yourself your cross, and there are a few options, including the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, I think it's very important, then I will bless it there as well. And you can see that it's shining because there's anointing oil on top of it. And I will cover the cross with it. And that cross of Jerusalem, Jerusalem cross unique to Jerusalem and the Holy Land, is um, right here. Oh, I forgot to mention it. Rachel, this is Rachel in English and in Hebrew. And Paul, this is your name in Hebrew and English. And sorry about the family name. I don't know how to pronounce it. But you can see that it's yours. Um, for me, this is such an emotional place because I believe that this is the most secret place of the, um, of the church for us because the naked body of Jesus touched that, that stone, anointing table. That's where Jesus was crucified. Uh, was, and they prepared this body for the burial site. Can we uh, continue to the... Uh, hey, oh, would you like to, yes, uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. So the last image of Jesus, the third one, is uh, when they all take, the, take Jesus' uh, body and they take it, if you notice, into a cave, not really into a tomb, oh. not a fancy one, uh, not a sepulcher as we call the church, but a cave that uh, was used uh, back in the days as a tomb. And um, we will be able to uh, later on get into the sepulcher of Jesus. We need to understand the sepulcher of Jesus is, was built on top of that cave where Jesus was buried, True. not accessible to, uh, it's not accessible to get into the cave of Jesus as the tomb was built on top of it. And, 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 and you know what, later on, uh, we will uh, enter to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, then we will actually can describe it. Uh, but another thing, important thing is that my mother was buried without a coffin, without a casket, just like Jesus. I know that for the Christians it's very rare, but the Jews until today are not buried with caskets. I've been in two funerals lately of um, not even soldiers, uh, two people who've been murdered by the ISIS. And because they murdered by ISIS, by law, they must be buried in coffins, wooden coffins. But that is a temporary area because the places that they came from is forbidden now to enter. And, uh, and uh, fam their families promised to bury them later on at the site, at the, the, at the villages that were destroyed and burned down by ISIS. Um, when we, they will be able to do that, but by law, they will bury them in casket because <sighs> some of them been reheaded. Some of them were burned down by them. Some of them were butchered by, the, by ISIS. Then soldiers and terror victims are always buried in uh, caskets in Israel. The rest, like my mother, is not, are not. Then this is for me such a strong area. And the smell, come and smell it now. Oh, the smell of the anointing oil is amazing. In front of you is an um, Armenian chapel. Uh, and that's where the three uh, women, I mean the women of Jerusalem, saw the crucifixion according to the Greek Orthodox. And the fire, that you see here, the fire is from the Holy uh, Saturday fire. And let me just bless it here as well for you. And let's go to the tomb. Now, we're expecting to see the tombs, the tomb of Jesus like a, like a cave, but... Um, 
We are not going to see it like that. Can you talk about it, Itamar? Can you say something about it too? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, usually people would wait three hours yeah, um, in to a get line. Into the to the tomb. Now, as well by ourselves. Everyone can here. enter. We Everyone can enter. Worry. Mm -hmm. You know what? Can you go in and bless it? I cannot go in with a camera. Of course. But I want you to bless it in the tomb. And, 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 and you can actually say whatever you want. I'm sure that we will hear it. So I'm entering right now to the tomb of Jesus. We're on top of where Jesus was buried. And I want to wish you best of all. I want to wish you good and long life to you. And I really feel that you're like here. And your presence is here I with me. Spiritually, and hopefully also physically, we have a pretty special place. So, all the best. And And um, I'm so happy that Itamar blessed us. I'm trying to do something that I'm afraid, a little bit afraid to do that, to enter with the camera, just for like a second. Though usually, I mean, in COVID time, he let me enter, but there's no one here, then I will try to do that. Just to show you that it's the two chapels. One of the angels took care that normally still the body of Christ uh, in it. You can see the candle from the holy fire. Let me show the tomb itself. Then you saw the interior part of the tomb, the one that um, the first chapel, the candle is where they, um, the angels took care that no one will stay the body of Christ. The second part is the, the tomb himself, but you must understand that the, as uh, Itamar said, that place wasn't like that, it was a cave. It was a burial Jewish cave. Uh, we have so many like that uh, outside the city. And um, we know that, that it was, uh, it, it's the garden of Joseph of Ramitia, and he gave Jesus his own tomb. Um, and a very important thing to understand is that on Sunday, the ladies came, not the men. Mary Magdalene came to look for Jesus, and it wasn't, he wasn't there. Then they went to Mount Zion, to the room, the Last Supper, to tell the disciples, to convince them to come. And it took time because they didn't believe them. Uh, and then John and uh, uh, St. Peter uh, came to see that he's, he's not there. And Mary was looking for uh, Jesus. And she saw a gardener. And she asked him, did he take my, uh, the body of my Lord? And he said, I am your Lord. That was Jesus. But I'm not purified. I'm not pure yet. I didn't reach my father in heaven, go and tell it to the disciples. Then uh, we saw the tomb itself. And uh, let's see where Mary Magdalene um, uh, um, saw the gardener, saw Jesus at on Sunday, the resurrection day. It, it's the same as the Corona time. No, no priest here. Um, now I'm not afraid because I know that it's okay to enter. Uh, th this is where Ma Mary Magdalene met 
uh, the garden. For me, it's the 15th station of the uh, Via Della Rosa. Although there's only 14 station, mainly because um, it's part of the same story. And uh, why not to accept it as it? You can see that that floor was already renovated by the Catholic, because it's a Catholic area. This is where um, Mary Magdalene was standing. And look at the sun. This is where Jesus was standing. And this is where Itamar is standing. Uh, Itamar, can we go to see the prison of Jesus? Yeah, that actually is not closed, so we can go there. Yeah, yeah it's open. Uh, but on the way, you can see the floor. They're still renovating uh, the floor. They already excavated here and they cover it. Just for the information, the restrooms are right outside. And the wall, the part of the wall is from the 4th century church here. Also, oh, it's pretty amazing to see the pillars, the columns in the church. Some yeah. of them are crusader and some of them are Byzantine. Yes, and, uh, different, it's like a Lego. One I mean, next to the other. It's not like a regular church. No. It was built in parts, been, and then been destroyed, set on fire uh, so many times. Earthquakes. Yeah. Uh, we are shaking it from time to time. Then this belongs to the Greek Orthodox. Um, the prison of Jesus, we know about Pontius Pilate, but think about that. If someone is going to the crucifixion place, it takes time. I mean, it's all about bureaucratic thing until they crucified him, then they have, he had to be in the prison. According to the Greek Orthodox, usually prison looks like that. Two holes for the legs, and then he used to tie his hand. Oops. Hmm. Just let me take a short video of the inner chapel. And what's left for us to see is the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible mentioned according to the book of John, that the crucifixion place, which used to be belonged to King Herod, uh, um, at the time of Jesus, after, after King Herod time, it actually became to be a Roman place. But next to the Roman place, there was a garden of a rich man, Joseph of Ramitia, and he gave Jesus his own tomb. Then in that case, the crucifixion and the burial site can be at the same site. Because this is one of the questions that people ask me. How can it be that it's actually at the same site? Now we can understand that. It's, it's, uh, no, it is like, first of all, it is uh, a pleasure also for me to walk around with you because you know when we um, talk about the church, you are talking about things that maybe I don't talk about. I talk about things that maybe you don't it's talk totally about. It's totally true. That's why I uh, prefer to do that to travel with, um, with a guide and to hear more and more about the sites, about um, the information. We're getting in right now to an another denomination that we have in the church right now, which is the Syrian chapel. If you look back towards the tomb of tomb Jesus, Jesus, you'll be able to see the Coptic side of the tomb of Jesus. Yeah. What we saw before was the Greek Orthodox, and now we can see the Coptic side of it, um, which is like two different entrances. And you can see the Rotunda, this beautiful architectural um, tomb of Jesus. And now we're getting into a Syrian chapel. And the Syrian chapel, um, a lot of people uh, skip it. But actually, yes. if, if we want to get the most like original look, authentic look of how Jesus was actually buried, True. it is not the tomb of Jesus. True. The tomb of Jesus is important because of his location. But if we want to understand how Jesus was buried, it is to get into this Syrian chapel that, as you can see, was also a little bit burned and damaged. Um, you can see graffitis from all over, like all over the cave here by uh, pilgrims. I remember that at the beginning of the video, I talked about graffiti, and then let's look at that. I mean, this is from uh, like years ago, I mean, only a few years ago. Endless, endless. Is that a corruption? Well, now yes, but in about 200 years, it's going to be history. Um, 
let's talk about the tomb here, but we have to wait for the lady. If it's okay by you, um, can I use your flashlight? Of course. In your camera? Because um, um, until she will go, I want you to see uh, the wall here. The wall around you is from 4th century church. This is from St. Ellen Church. The church was built only in the 4th century because until the 4th century, uh, Christianity was a non-legal religion. And you can see the holes. There's so many holes around the wall because uh, holes were to, I mean, uh, um, marble. It was covered with marble. And that's the way to do that. And you can see a lot of holes here. But around the tomb, there are many holes. It means that here it was such an important site. Let, let her uh, um, go and we will enter. But you know what? We can actually talk about it. At the second uh, temple time, a rich family Jew uh, used to build tombs, like rock cut caves. Uh, poor Jews used to make a hole in the ground, and that's, uh, that's how they buried uh, their dead. In there, you will see niches to put the body in the niches, and let's go in now. Uh, be the first one, or because I need to see. Yeah, I want to see everything. Oops. Yeah. Then first of all, oh, it's a beautiful picture to take of of um, of um, Itamar. But look at the niches. There are two niches here. Can you light uh, that area? No, you're right. There are a few more niches, and some of them are closed. When you bury the dead, you used to close um, the niche, the outside, remember the rolling stone? And this is the side of a human being. And um, what will happen, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, and behind me there's another one, five niches. What will happen to the sixth person? There's no more place for him. Then they will open the oldest um, uh, niche. They will, put the they will take out the bones. They will put it in a small osary small box for that and that osary will be taken to a storeroom and um, they will bury that there. Now why it was very important for me to talk about it because when Jesus was buried he got a tomb from Joseph of Arimathea that no one used before and now we can understand that no one used before it was a virgin tomb then Joseph of Arimathea had to build himself another structure, another tomb. Uh, then in that case, we believe that this is the tomb of Joseph of Ramitia's family. Why they didn't destroy it? The enemies of the Christian didn't destroy it because it wasn't important for them. There's another niche there from remember. It wasn't important for them. What was important for them is the uh, tomb of Jesus. Then the tomb of Jesus has been destroyed, but that tomb of Joseph of Arimathea was never. And as you said, Itamar, that is the same burial site of Jesus, but that gives us another option, another thing important. Jesus was crucified and buried outside the city. If there are tombs here, it means that the um, the tomb of Joseph, or the garden was outside the city too. And that shows us that it used to be a cemetery area. I don't know if they are proud of what they are doing here, but I, I don't see it as a proud thing. Why it looks like that? Because you mentioned that it belongs to the Church of Syria, but the Armenian believes that that is that room, their room, the Coptic believes that it's their room as well. And they're still fighting who owns that room. And because of it, no one maintained it. You mentioned the fire marks from 1808. This is the most important church in the world. And instead of joining the forces together as Christians, they're fighting between themselves. It reminds us the war between, the, the, between the, the, the ISIS and, and Israel right now. ISIS from Gaza, Hamas organization.
We did everything here. I think so. Yeah. I think we. Yeah. yeah. Then. Um, there is also the room of the center of the spiritual ah. Orthodox world. Do you want to go to see the maybe the the Katilikon, the, the uh, Russian place will be open for us? If it is open, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. It, I, yeah, it I didn't. is. Um, like you can see it, you cannot uh, go in it. Yeah. All right. It's a beautiful place. Oh, they just renovated the dome. Uh, they already finished renovating it. You can see Jerusalem in heaven. Oh, they moved the uh, chandelier from there to here. Mm -hmm. And that stone marks the center of the wood. Then I'm usually making a round tour around it. But sadly, it's closed and we cannot go in. I think we saw every part of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then um, uh, a summer just called you. And let's go to summer to drink coffee. And then we will start your videos as well tomorrow. I didn't forget about it. Do you have a limit of time? No, I'm not. All good. right. No one is waiting for you in the house except no. of your cat. <laughs> good. Then please subscribe our channels. And now uh, I will leave the link for for um, uh, Moses' nephew, Itamar, uh, channel as well. And if you want to support us, you can. Now, beneath the video, you will see the um, uh, um, shape of a heart. It's called uh, Super Thanks, and you can actually help me to maintain my uh, channel. And I'm not going to work for the next half a year, then yes, you can. Another two options, in the description you'll find, uh, buy me a coffee link, which you can buy the products, and I will prepare a video for you and send it to you, or just to support my channel, and via PayPal as well, the link is there. Church of the Holy Sepulchre, wartime. Such an empty place, such a sad place. Thank you very much for being with us. Bye-bye.